Hey guys, so today we are going to talk a little bit about uh, a question. We're going to try to answer one question and that question being uh, since there are many acids in the world, right? There's like so many types. We studied about one specifically. We use HCl in our experiments, but there are more, right? Talked about nitric acid, sulfuric acid, and there's uh, acetic acid, citric acid, lactic acid. There are like so many, right? The question here is: since there are so many acids, are they all the same strength? Do they all have the same kind of strength or do they have the same kind of power in a way of saying? By power I mean we know that acids have a certain property, right? With the hydrogen ions or with the hydroxide ions for bases, they start to act the way they do, right? They kind of burn into your skin or do anything that they are supposed to do, like the reaction with metals or anything else. Now the point is, do all of the acids have the same strength or the same effect? Obviously not, right? There are the, the reason they are different is because they are not the same in many ways. One of the big ways being that other than their chemical structure, they are also different in how, how strong they are or how much they act. So what uh, we are going to do today, we are going to look at a way of measuring how strong or how weak you know acids or bases or any anything is compared to each other. That will be our main topic of study today. How do I compare different type of chemicals or substances anything like that. Okay. So uh, to understand this what we are going to do, we are going to learn about uh, something called as a pH okay small p capital H pH okay so pH stands for potence of hydrogen potence means strength or power in a way so the p in pH stands for potence which means power all right so now uh, what power of hydrogen tells you is if I take the same quantity of acid for example say that like I have say roughly 10 ml of acid here if I take 10 ml of HCl and if I take 10 ml of let's say citric acid will they both be equal strength obviously not right one is obviously stronger than the other and pH is nothing but a way to measure how strong they are so in pH we have something called a pH scale okay so the pH scale has a certain number of values depending on how strong or how weak you are you will get a number all right so uh, for a pH scale the numbers go from typically 1 to 14 all right some books will also mention 0 to 14 that depends again it uh, on which product you take and which book you are reading right so pH is going to differ based on where you are reading it from typically if I talk about uh, this paper right so I have this box with me right it's called a pH paper indicator box and it has scale 1 to 14 so if I look at this scale here it has certain numbers and certain different colors If you recall, I spoke to you about when we did the indicator, I said that we are going to look at something called in universal indicator or pH indicator later. This is exactly that. Alright, so uh, we are going to just see how pH works and how big it is. Alright, I have two samples here, this clear liquid and this kind of clear liquid. I will tell you what this is in a while. Okay, first I am going to show you the procedure of using a pH paper. So you first take the paper uh, out of this bunch right just take one paper it will be like yellowish green in color which doesn't really matter okay because that's gonna change shortly anyway so you just peel out one paper okay 
and then you dip it in the solution that you're trying to check for okay for example I want to check in this I want to see what this is so I'll simply dip my pH paper in it and la. if you can see the color of my paper has changed a lot right it's become like pink red something Now what I need to do is take out this scale over here and measure it with this color, right? The color is the number and my cat does not understand that this is not proper lab behavior. Need to be careful around acids. Be careful cat. All right. So what I was saying is you measure the color and you match the number okay so this is not exactly the same it will be a little above or below okay i am guessing a little below because it's a little bit of a red and orange mix so i can definitely say that the ph of this acid over here is somewhere around one okay Now what I'm going to do on a similar note, I'll test this thing also that I have with me. The solution, which is something I'll shortly tell you. You might have guessed what it is by the looks of it. If you do have a guess, put it in the comments. All right, but obviously you have to comment before the video is done. <laughs> okay, right. So I'm going to dip this paper in this solution too now and ta-da. If you see, it's leaking a green color now. Again, if you see, it's different from the original color of the paper, right? Now, again, I'm going to look at the scale and see what exactly which range is this. If I see it is somewhere at an 8 or a 9, right? So it's simply a matter of comparing your indicator color to the listed color. Okay. Now the scale runs from 1 to 14, like I said. Okay whenever something is at a one or any number below seven that material is said to be acidic okay that material is said to be acidic so since it remember this pink color gave me a one so i know for sure that this thing is an acid all right the same way anything above seven or below 14 between seven and 14 is going to be a definitely a base right so this green thing which had a number between somewhere around 10 or something it is definitely a base right on one side below 7 is acid on the other side above 7 is base so what exactly would be 7 it's in between acid and base which is called as neutral by neutral it means no difference at all right it's not an acid it's not a base it is kind of neutral so the word neutral is must be familiar because neutralization reaction right so neutralization reaction is when you add an acid base in a way that they kind of become the ph7 right so now uh, just to check if we are able to get a ph7 number i'm going to test this with regular the water that i drink which i hope is not an acid or a base i want it to be neutral 
okay so here goes and I have wet my which is now lightly green which is a little concerning because uh, that's okay I think this is a good shade of yeah it's still 7 alright so if you see this is exactly in the middle which is 7 right which means this water is neutral it is safe to drink just so you know I am not kidding <laughs> here this was the base this is the water right the water is much milder than the base so I am sure that this water is okay and I can drink it now this is what pH is a uh, scale that is used universally anywhere in the whole world whoever is doing chemistry knows what pH is and they know what numbering it is uh, from 1 to 14 or 0 to 14 the essential part being anything below 7 is an acid anything above 7 is a base now uh, if you remember a while ago we said some acids are stronger than others so how do I know which one is stronger than the other by simply looking at the number okay when the pH is between 1 and 3 that is the starting of the scale we say it is a really strong acid it means you need to be very careful with that okay anything between 4 5 6 that range is going to be a weak acid okay so from 1 it starts as really strong acids and as it goes towards 7 they become weaker and weaker until they reach 7 which is neutral okay coming to base the other end is the strongest right so 14 would be a really strong base and you come back 13 12 11 that is all the strong base area 10 9 8 this would be weaker bases okay so remember strong acid weak acid neutral weak base finally strong base the edges are always strong keep that in mind and as you come towards the center they become weak right so now uh, this is all about ph tomorrow's class what we are going to do we we'll look at a couple of applications of why is this ph important i mean sure it's there but what what help is it for me or what else is it for the world in general has to be some use for it other than having this class right so yes we are gonna look at that tomorrow and for now that would be the end of my class thank you and for those who did not get the answer this is soap water so soap is a base right keep that in mind every time you're washing your hands you're washing it with the base okay kids i'll see you tomorrow